Broadway, listen to the Broadway beats. Broadway makes you wanna move your feet. Everybody's tapping into everything that's happening on Broadway beats. Broadway beats. Broadway beats. Hello, I'm Richard Ridge for Broadway Beat. Roundabout Theatre Company is proud to present Athel Fugard's The Road to Mecca, directed by Gordon Edelstein. The production kicks off Mr. Fugard's 80th birthday celebration. It stars Rosemary Harris, Carla Gugino, and Jim Dale. We caught up with the entire company during a break in rehearsal. Well, I mean, what they're going to take away from it, I believe, are, to start with, memories of three incredible performances, because led by Rosemary Harris in the main role and then Carla Guccina and Jim Dale. You know, you couldn't wish for a better evening in theatre than to be watching those three on a stage working out. So I, I, I think the audience is going to go away thinking, well, that was a few dollars well spent. <laughs> Talk just a little bit about the themes of the play and working here at Roundabout. The um, theme of the play is really about the significance of an artist in any community and you know and by artist one uses it in the widest possible sense the writer the painter the poet the playwright any of those uh, because this lady the real Helen Martins on whom the play is based you know had a hard time of it in this isolated little community she was eventually ostracized and that the, the, the solitude and the reclusive quality of her last years, I think, is what, uh, why she committed suicide eventually, because that is the ending of the real Helen Martins. I don't end the play in that way. I end the play on a more celebratory and positive note. Well, like all Athos plays, um, they are uh, deceptively simple. They seem like they're small canvases, but he burrows very deep into the human soul. Um, three very unalike people uh, encounter each other in one evening in a small town in the desert community of New Bethesda in central South Africa. They all have met before, they all know each other, some very, very well, but in, that, in, this, uh, in this encounter is uh, our wonderful play. It's about a, an artist named Helen who what we've, we've come to call an outsider artist, an artist who um, never been to a museum, never read an art book, but she creates art that comes from visions inside of her. Who knows where this muse comes from? It's a mystery. Um, but she is creating work that is uh, a threat to this small Calvinist community. And she's become a pariah and more isolated in this community. And. Um, without wanting to give too much of the story away. It's about the conflict between her, the local preacher, and her great friend from Cape Town who's come to visit her. Well, Elsa is such an interesting woman and, and, and very different than, than uh, a lot of characters that I've played, actually. She certainly, I think, uh, you know, she's at a, a really big turning point in her life. She has, uh, I think, been a person who has been pretty, you know, she's been on a pedestal in the sense of she feels that she's morally right. Um, she feels very clear in her convictions. She has no problem sharing them. And an event has happened in her life where she has really been knocked down to her knees. And this is not a time to be able to come and help her friend. This is not an ideal time to come and help Helen, but because she loves her so much, she will. And and ultimately, um, it's a real moment of crisis for her and, uh, and, and a moment ultimately of breakthrough. So she's extraordinary. It's interesting, my personal uh, sort of go-to emotion is not anger. <laughs> and, uh, and, I, and it really is with Elsa. I mean, she is someone who I think may have a lot of sympathy, but not a lot of empathy until the end of this play. Well, Athol actually wrote this play about a, a lady in South Africa who did exist. She lived in a small village in South Africa, and uh, over a period of years, she became what would possibly be Africa's first uh, um, outsider artist. She created over 400 different strange, weird, concrete creatures made of cement and bent wire in her garden, all of them facing Mecca. 
this lady existed and after she died her home was made into a museum which is visited now by thousands and thousands of people a lot of them due to the fact they have read Road to Mecca because Athol Fugar based his story on this ex this lady and the, ho the home that she lived in her home itself was unbelievably colored it came to life at light at night when the candles were lit because of the ground glass she had smothered the walls in and it the whole her whole world was an enlightenment uh, she left the church and became a free spirit and created her own world and that's the world that Athel Fugar explores by bringing in a friend of hers from an outside city for that particular evening and the local preacher who has been aware that she is drifting far from the flock and he would like her back into the flock and so it's the, when these two people come together on that evening to try to rescue save um, that's what the play becomes a story about. That he, uh, the, the, the friend wants her to uh, be allowed to live the life she wants. My character wants her back in the church and the, under his protection to look after her in her old age. So if, if he's the villain, then it's, uh, it's a, a, a different sort of villain than most people expect. It's a gentle villain. Yes, it's, it's, it's a, a magical play. It's about so many things. It's a, as a, I said, it's a love story. But it's about faith and and your artistic believing in, in in your artistic creations, believing in them yourself and having other people believe in them as well. Um, and it's also about old age and facing the inevitable. And also, I'm at the age now where I have friends who are beginning to think about going into retirement homes, and whether they want to go or whether they're forced to go or circumstances force them to go. And that's one of the themes in the play because my character, Miss Helen, doesn't want to leave her home. But they think it's better for her because she can't take care of herself properly. And in real life, she did become a recluse and would avoid people in the street. She, she wouldn't, didn't want to see anybody or talk to anybody. Um, became a hermit, really. Just quickly, your 80th birthday celebration, kicking it off here at the roundabout, what that means to you. Oh, what, uh, well, I just hope it doesn't mean that people are giving, passing on a suggestion that they've had enough of me now because I mean to go on writing.